Now in this video we are going to look at uh, magnetic resonance imaging and on the diagram there is the magnetic resonance imaging scanner. Now this scans the hydrogen content in the body. Hydrogen atoms are present mostly in water molecules. As you know water molecules are H2O so those hydrogen atoms are the ones that are used in the scan. MR scans can distinguish between different types of tissue because of the way the hydrogen nuclei in the molecules in the different tissues respond to changing magnetic fields. Hydrogen nuclei behave as if they, they possess what is called spin. Since uh, hydrogen nuclei are tamed protons because they only have only one proton in the nucleus they tend to have this uh, magnetic property so they tend to spin such nuclei have an odd number of protons the spin causes the nuclei of these atoms to behave as tiny magnets when an external magnetic field is applied to these atoms they tend to line up in the direction of the field so they will be uh, spinning at the same time lining up with the new external magnetic field which, have, which they have been placed in. So they tend to rotate at a certain angle similar to that of a gyroscope. I have included a second video to show you uh, an animation on this. So this is just on the syllabus content and then an animation will follow this video to make you understand how this uh, precession comes about. So this is the rotation similar to that of a gyroscope. So the spinning of the hydrogen atoms in the magnetic field, external magnetic field, is referred to as uh, precession. The motion is uh, uh, similar to the motion of a top spinning in a gravitational field. So it's not exactly uh, uniform, it will be tilted at an angle. So that's uh, precession. Now as they precess, a certain frequency which is called uh, the Lamour frequency, the frequency of precession, right, is uh, the frequency that they possess. So it depends on the nature of the nucleus and the strength of the magnetic field that is used. The Lamour frequency is found to lie within the radio frequency range uh, of the electromagnetic spectrum. Right, going back again to the, uh, to the, right. So what I'm saying is, the patient is in there, and then we do have a radio frequency coil. So if you have a, a coil like this, so we, this is just a cutaway of the whole system. It's going to be cylindrical. So we've cut so that we see what is inside. So this, what you see, will be a, a totally cylindrical object. And that's where the coils are. So these are the coils that will be inside. So they'll be cylindrical and out. Now from our topic on magnetic fields, if we do have a coil and then we supply a current, so a magnetic field is going to be created. That magnetic field is going to be going into the coil. Like that. So parallel to the person. So it's going to be into the coil. So these hydrogen atoms that are present in the human uh, being, they tend to, they are having the spin, so they tend to align in this magnetic field that, has been, uh, that they've been placed in. And they tend to precess. So it so they precess at this Lamour frequency that we've just talked about. Okay. Um, right. So a short RF pulse equal to the Lamour frequency is applied, which causes the atoms to resonate. And when the pulse ends, the nuclei return to the equilibrium state with the emission of energy in the form of RF frequency. So the nuclei would then tend to release energy after this power. So the short pulse is introduced. When it is introduced, they tend to resonate at that frequency, these um, uh, 
hydrogen uh, atoms that we talked about in the nuclei. So they tend to resonate. After the resonance, uh, resonance the short pulse is, rem is removed. When it is removed, they tend to uh, release energy. So they take some time as they die down to their uh, initial spinning. So the time that they take to get to their initial uh, way of spinning is called the relaxation time. Okay, so uh, the short time between the end of the RF pulse and the re-emitting of the radiation is known as the relaxation time. There are two relaxation processes and the time between the two is used in the uh, MRI to differentiate between uh, different tissues. Now, you find that watery tissues have relaxation times of several seconds. And then fatty tissues are if shorter relaxation times and cancerous tissues will be in somewhere in between that is intermediate. Different tissues can be distinguished by the different rates at which they release energy after they've been forced to resonate. So you can tell whether this is uh, muscle or this is uh, fat and so forth by looking at the different uh, uh, relaxation times. Because of its abundance in body tissue and fluids, hydrogen is the atom used in this scanning technique. So this is a schematic of uh, the whole process. So we have the, the coil that's shown in blue. And then we are going to introduce that magnetic field, okay, the strong magnetic field. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so we said that um, the whole thing is cylindrical, so we need to to use uh, a very strong um, magnetic field. We achieve that by using superconducting materials. So superconducting material is zero resistance, so which means all the current is uh, turned into magnetic uh, f uh, field. So how do we do that? We then need to store it in a very cool place so we need to cool so the whole thing is cooled using helium liquid helium so when this is uh, is cooled uh, then you you tend to have the property that makes this have a very strong magnetic field right then we do have other non-uniform magnetic fields that are also uh, at play, we are going to talk about that uh, very, very soon. Okay. So, a large electromagnet producing a uniform magnetic field up to two Tesla. So, that is our number one there. Okay. And then number two, the magnets producing non-uniform field to locate the position. So, the purpose of these uh, non-uniform fields magnetic fields is to locate the precise position of the uh, with within the patient where uh, these particular hydrogen atoms are and then uh, this is the RF coil to transmit the RF pulse into the body and to detect the emitted signal as they relax to their original position so the, the RF uh, coils are there to, as a receiver as well as a generator. Okay, receiver and generator. Now, the, com the computer controls the RF pulses and analyzes and displays the image. So, that is our number four, which is the computer, it's a processor. The patient is placed between the poles of a very large magnet that produces a uniform magnetic field in excess of one Tesla. Remember when we did the topic on uh, magnetic fields, we were looking at very, very small values in Tesla. So one Tesla will be a very large value. This causes the hydrogen nuclei within the person to precess within the Lamour frequency. To detect hydrogen nuclei in only one small part of the body, 
a non-uniform magnetic field is also applied. This non-uniform field is accurately calibrated so that there is a unique value of magnetic field strength at each point in the patient. The Lamoa frequency will also be different in each part of the patient because it is dependent on the strength of the magnetic field. Okay. So remember the uh, these uh, hydrogen nuclei, or hydrogen atoms rather, they tend to uh, spin. So the precession rate, uh, remember the angular velocity will be omega. Now this angular speed or the angular uh, velocity is going to be proportional to the strength of this magnetic field. The stronger the field, the more the uh, angular speed of precession. As the non-uniform magnetic field is changed together uh, with the radio frequency that is emitted, hydrogen nuclei in different parts of the patient's body are located. Radio frequency pulses are transmitted to the patient by means of suitable coils. These coils are also used to detect the RF emissions from the patient. The received emissions are processed in order to construct an image of the number density of hydrogen atoms in the patient. An image of the cross section of the patient body may be produced. A series of images of sections can be uh, produced and stored in the computer memory. Okay, so if we look at it again, so we do have uh, the RF coils there that receive and uh, also generate the RF uh, radio frequency. Okay, and then we've got the gradient coils, right? And uh, so the gradient coils are right there. So those are the ones that uh, if that produce non-uniform magnetic field. And then also we do have the magnet that is made up of a superconductor, superconducting material, which is then which needs to be cooled by uh, introducing helium. Advantages: None, there are no harmful radiation that is involved. Uh, a 3D image is obtained, and it is ideal for detecting tumors and neurological diseases. Since we are now looking at the disadvantages, since we are looking at uh, the cooling of the whole process using helium, helium is very expensive, so the whole process becomes very expensive. The equipment must be shielded from the Earth's magnetic field again. Uh, and then some patients may feel trapped inside since you've got to get in as you can see then the total scan takes some time so the patient patient will be inside the for quite some time which they would feel trapped right so that is the end of this i'm going to like i promised uh upload another video that will be an animation to show how this whole thing works in case you did not quite understand uh, some of the parts in this video signing out